Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the third part of our series of how to get better at Adobe Premiere Pro. And by the end of this, you should have a really good understanding of how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, the key functions and tools that you can use, and also some tips on how to create better looking videos, especially if you're just starting out. Now we've already covered about importing your content, sequence settings, and all those really important things that are a little bit less fun because it's less editing, but it's still super important to the end result. And we've just gone over cutting up the content, how to bring it into your timeline, some hotkeys, that means that you can save a lot of time, keyframes as well, so that you can manipulate and move your footage around and things like that. And now I'm gonna dive into music. So we brought in a music track earlier on, which is in our music folder or a music bin, as Adobe Premiere Pro likes to call it. And we're quite simply, again, either go into double click that and it will open up here. And we can either use our in and out points, so I for in, O for out, or we can just drag the whole track in as well. So I'm actually just gonna use this in and out point. We're not actually creating a video because we wanna keep this short and to the point. You guys don't necessarily want to watch me just edit a video from start to finish. Perhaps if you do, let me know in the comments below, but I'd rather just give you straight to the point answers that are gonna help you right now. So you can watch this video, go away and do it, and take this same stuff that I'm saying now and apply it to almost any scenario you find yourself in. These are the tips and tricks and things that we do on every single video without fail. So these are the most important things. Obviously you can get into a lot more higher end detail if you wanna dive into that. Sure, that's fine, we can create some more content around that, but really everyone needs to understand how to use the basics properly before trying to you know, run before you can walk and all of that jazz. So we're gonna bring in this music. We can see obviously that's a super, super short thing here and uh, we'll bring it in here for argument's sake. So you mentioned before that I can unlink things, but I can also mute the track or solo the track if I've got lots of different audio layers. And uh, if I zoom in by holding option and then scrolling in on my uh, laptop, uh, on my Mac obviously, um, you can see that it's got all these peaks and troughs. Now don't have the music, so for instance when it plays, it's hitting red over here because it's gonna be horrible. So you wanna make it as close to probably minus six as you can. That'll give a really nice view and experience. So somewhere around that would be good. Nothing's peaking in the ears, nothing's losing uh, quality and being distorted. So you want your audio to uh, really bring your video alive. Now, someone will watch a bad video with good audio, but they won't watch a good video with bad audio. So just keep those things in mind. It needs to be visually pleasing, but it also needs to have a soundtrack or some kind of immersive soundtrack or music behind it to, to make you want to keep watching and excite you as well. Now, obviously music works on beats. So when we edit, we want to make the cuts on the beat, okay? And that's again, another really good tip that can make your video go from an amateur to look more professional if you try and make all of your cuts happen on the beat of the music. I don't need to explain that in any more detail. You can follow the beats. When, when the, the cursor gets to that point, stop it, trim your audio clip and you can drag that down or you can use your cut tool again and then you can make the next click come in there. So it comes in on the beat, especially if it's a big crescendo and then it's a big bang or you want something to happen on that impact. So always try and cut your uh, footage on the beat of the music. And again, that means being super brut brutal with yourself. Where is the best bit of that clip? Can we trim the end? Do we trim the start? What bit do we take out? And it gets you creatively thinking outside that box, not just using clips for the sake of it. So we've got our audio in. So at this point, we should have a pretty good timeline. The first part of the whole editing process is really about bringing your clips in, so your clip selection, then adding the music and then dicing it up to fit the music so that you'll have a really good, what we would call first draft. Your video is in a great point where you're actually happy with it. It's 90 or 80% there to what the client would be happy with or that you're happy with. Now we can start to add things like effects. With reason we don't add effects any sooner than this or color grade things is because you could be color grading things and adding effects to things that you actually end up deleting because it doesn't fit with the overall flow of the video. So always make sure you've got a really good idea, a good vision in your head of what you want the end goal to look like. And then hopefully throughout this process, you've created that and now you're at a point where you're visually happy, the music sounds good, now we can start to add a little bit of color if it needs it or some effects. Now 
not going to go through all the effects. Again, Adobe has got tons. You can spend a bit of time just going through them. But the effect that you're probably going to use the most, especially if you're a beginner, is Warp Stabilizer. So you can access that by the left-hand side down here. You can scroll through to effects. That's generally my preference. I like to stay within this screen. Or you can click on the effects tab. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to type in Warp for Warp Stabilizer. And what this will do is it will take a shaky bit of footage and it will smooth it out. Now, don't forget there's a very fine line between it looking professional and smooth and nice and looking horrible and doing too much of a, a quote, good job, if that's what you can call it. And if you've got a piece of content that is really shaky, it's not going to work a miracle. It's not going to make up for the lack of filming ability, but it can help get some of the way there. So if I go through now to my effect controls up on the top left here, you can see that warp stabilizer has been added. And actually, if I click over this, you can see that it's currently analyzing it in the background. So we will just wait a second for that to finish. And then I will click my fingers and we'll be back in the room. Okay, there we go. It has now finished analyzing on some of our uh, Macs and PCs upstairs where we have in our editing suite. Um, it does it super quick. I'm obviously on an old school Mac, so it's not doing that well. Now, if I play this through, if it allow me to, you can see how it's smoothed it out, but it's making it feel a bit wavy, a bit trippy. Now, if that's the effect you're going for, then great, it's done a brilliant job, but it's probably not. So over the left-hand side here, you want to change that smoothness, and you can go down as low as 5%, but I suggest trial and error. Go to 20%, see how it looks, it will stabilize it again, and then you can play that through, and it's less wavy than it was before. Again, click on that clip, and you can just go through the options. Now, we use a subspace warp. You can also use position, scale, and rotation. Um, I wouldn't bother with the other ones, to be honest. I would just generally test those two um, and see what works better between them. Generally, subspace warp is does the best job, so I leave it on that. It's just about getting the right smoothness. Now, the other thing is the end result. Do you want smooth motion or no motion? So if you filmed an interview and you've got it on your shoulder and you want it to be as still as possible, then perhaps you want to select no motion but Warp Stabilizer can get you out of some really tricky situations. Now, I've got a couple more tips that will become in super handy for you, and that is if you have filmed somewhere and there's a flicker in light, if um, you've got your shutter speed wrong, basically, on your camera and the lights are flicking or they're strobing, then what you need to do is this. You need to take the clip. This clip, it doesn't apply to because it's not flickering, but you'll, you'll get the example. So you take the clip, you duplicate it, and you can do that by holding down um, Alt on the Mac, Mac or Option and dragging it up. And then all you need to do is zoom in. You need to put your cursor at the start and go one frame to the right. When you go to the frame to the right, take the clip on top, move that over, and then change the opacity of that clip to 50%. Now, obviously, for the purpose of this, because there's no flashing light, it's made it a little bit more blurry, and it does reduce the sharpness of your video. Now, the reason the lights flicker is because they effectively strobe on and off. They go on, off, on, off, on, off. Um, especially with old school lights, they do it a lot slower, so that's why you get flicker. And that's a really simple technique on how you can resolve that problem right there. So that will get a lot of you out of trouble if you're in some footage that um, you haven't captured necessarily right or the person hasn't. The next thing I want to cover very quickly is speed remapping or perhaps um, slow motion or ramping the speed. So for this, you can right click, go to speed duration, and you can slow this down like we were saying before. Let's slow it down by 50%. You can also re reverse the speed there if you want to as well. And because of the purpose of this, I'm going to remove warp stabilizer just by toggling it off in the effects panel over on the left. Then you can slow your clip down. Now, if you actually want to have more control, perhaps you want to do a speed ramp. And if I zoom right into here, I've got an effects logo here. If I right click and go to time remapping and click speed, it gives me this bar along here. This bar is what is going to be the speed. So that's 100% speed at the moment. If I move that up, it will go faster. Down will be slower. But what I want to do is I want to press command and click on that. And that's created a keyframe for me. Okay. So in doing that keyframe, I can now drag up this section to make it faster. I can make this section lower at points of the video where I want it to be most impactful. And by clicking these little toggle arrows here, I can drag it out. So it might not be a sudden slow, it might be a gradual slow down to a normal speed. And that's a really good quick tip that I've gone over there. Finally, to wrap this video up and wrap up the end of this series, because these are literally the things that we use all the time creating content and making your work better is color grading. Now, I've used GoPro footage here because it's mounted on top of our customized FPV drone, but 
we wouldn't normally do too much with this. Perhaps we would, we would add in a few bits and pieces. There is a correct way to color grade and that's a very lengthy video in itself. So if you want to see that, let us know. Perhaps we can create that. But for you guys, you probably want to add a little bit of saturation perhaps, or you want to take some saturation out. The biggest mistake that beginners make when they edit footage is they make it super saturated. They make it so crazy colors and it's just not true to life. So please try and stop yourselves from going over saturated. Sometimes with some of your cameras, if you're not manually changing the settings or shooting in log or raw or anything like that, then you probably want to decrease the saturation slightly. You can increase your exposure, but again, remember that if you increase your exposure, you will start to lose some detail. Have a little play around with this, but one of my tips would be is to use this Lemetri scope over the left hand side. You can get that by clicking on settings and selecting um, waveform RGB. Now 100 is complete white. Anything over 100, there's no detail in it whatsoever. And the same with zero, but that's complete black. So for instance, with this, we know that over the left hand side, we've got some, um, white that is uh, losing all detail, that will be this arcade machine here. That's not actually that important to us with this shot. It's important that it's a little bit brighter over on the right hand side so we can afford to lose a little bit of detail there. It's always about making conscious choices and the blacks again are being crushed at the very bottom. So we don't want something that looks like this because that's horrible. We just want something that fits nicely in the middle. If you go through to your creative, you've got a few more options. And again, don't put saturation on 200 and your vibrance on 200 or 100. It's gonna start making it look really crazy and horrible. Perhaps if you're shooting a rap video or something trippy, you might want that. But generally speaking, it's not gonna look good and it's where most beginners go wrong. You could add a very small S curve in just to give it a little bit more of contrast by clicking in the middle here, clicking down here and bringing it apart. And what I suggest you do is actually take this to extreme so you get a good understanding of what bad looks like versus what good looks like. And Again, you've got options by bringing some more colors in here. So if I click on this timeline here, I can create some keyframes that we've gone over already. I can bring the blue all the way up and that will make that blue really punchy without affecting the other colors. So in a very, very quick to the point three part series on how to use Adobe Premiere Pro, you should now to have a good understanding of what tools to use, how to do everything professionally and properly to start getting the best results on your videos. If you've enjoyed any of this content, please do subscribe to the channel. Please let us know in the comments what you thought below and hit the like button too. Again, if you want me to dive into anything in a bit more detail, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know and we can help the community as much as possible. Until next time, keep working hard, keep testing this stuff out, spend some time because the more time you spend in Adobe Premiere Pro, the better you will become as an editor. Until next time, peace.